just north of Blacksburg, Brush Mountain peaks 500 meters above the Virginia Tech campus, exposing rock roughly 360 million years old. Its southern slope is bordered by the Pulaski Frost Fall, which once covered the mountain with older Cambrian limestone. However, this cover has been removed, and the mountain now stands well above Blacksburg. How did these sequence of events occur? Let's start by looking at the mountain's stratigraphy. Here we have a strat column of the six formations showing a regressing and transgressing sea level, beginning at the Brailler Formation. As sea level regresses, energy increases, and deposited grain sizes grow as we approach the lower price. The energy is at the highest at the Cloy Conglomerate and decreases through the units to the Elbrook, where energy is at the lowest and sea level is at the highest. The Pulaski Thrust Belt is the primary fault system in the area. The Pulaski Block was thrusted northwest onto the Saltville Block, placing the older Cambrian limestones on the newer Mississippian sandstones of Brush Mountain. The stark contrast in rock type has put a unique twist on the mountain's formation. The limestone hanging wall is easily dissolved by rain, forming a low-lying plain, while the foot wall's quartz sandstone can withstand much more weathering, leaving the ridge we see today. This figure shows the intricate system of overlapping thrusts that branch off. Here, the Catawba and Salem faults converge into the Pulaski Fault. But what event caused this fault system to resurface rock that had been buried at the time for over 200 million years? The Pulaski Fault was formed roughly 330 million years ago during the Allegheny and Orogeny. This was the final stage of the formation of the Appalachian Mountains. It occurred because of the collision between Laurentia and Gondwana. The shortening in the Blacksburg area was estimated to be about 142 kilometers or 85 percent. This was determined by producing a reconstruction of the event. Federal forestry and conservation efforts have allowed the general public and Virginia Tech students to get a closer look at the lithology of Brush Mountain. Here we are at Heritage Park viewing Brush Mountain, which is just to the north of Blacksburg. It extends from the New River all the way to Roanoke. Completed in 2020, the Gateway Trail climbs Brush Mountain connecting the Huckleberry Trail to the Pandapas Pond through the Snake Root and Poverty Creek Trails. Alright, so uh, these are the first outcrops you will encounter along the Gateway Trail. Uh, they are located uh, to the right side of the trail, across the creek. And these outcrops uh, are part of the Upper Price Formation, which consists of the or consists of medium grain sandstone. Ascending the mountain along the trail, we approach the base of the Lower Price Formation, which hosts weathered but sturdy ridgelines and boulders which stick out from the fallen leaves. All right, so we're at the bottom of one of the ridges that line the top of Brush Mountain. It's made of the Lower Price sandstone quartz conglomerate mix. Millions of years of weathering combined with glacial periods of intense freezing and falling have resulted in boulders detaching from the ridge faces, which consequentially bolster the integrity of the mountain by armoring slopes from incising streams. The hardier lower price formation ridge results in more boulders, which create a winding slope pattern compared to the straight channels present on the Devonian north flank. We are still looking at the lower price formation, um, but the texture you can kind of see is a, a hummocky cross section. Also, it has a very blocky texture that's mostly due just because of the lichen erosion and everything, uh, but also kind of the way the um, sediments have been um, deposited just because of the transition zone between a low energy and a high energy area just because when the snow storm waves come in um, it increases the depositional energy allowing for these weird pinching off effects to occur. Southwest of the ridge is an unnatural looking lidar disturbance. Let's take a closer look. A short walk west of the gateway trail here we are at some fresher quartz conglomerates where we can see evidence of quarrying of the Brush Mountain stones for the millstone industry in the early 20th century. If you take a closer look at this cylindrical cutout, this is not natural. Um, and actually, this was a drill mark resulting from a process called peg and feathering, which was a technique used to extract rocks from the outcrops using metal hand tools um, like hammers, prying rods, and stakes. We're going to strike on to our next stop, the Pandapas Pond, which lies on the north side of Brush Mountain. The water feature was excavated to add recreational fishing to the Jefferson National Forest area. However, we'll be taking a closer look at the Brailler Formation. As you can see here, the Brailler Formation is dominantly interbedded gray shale and medium grain sandstone, with a general trend of coarsening upwards in the formation. This interbedding reflects the depositional environment of a submarine slope, and has a distinct lower contact but is hard to distinguish due to deformation. Several miles east is our final stop along Mount Tabor Road. Here we are at one of the access points for the Mountain Valley Pipeline. The Mountain Valley Pipeline was permitted to distribute natural gas from Woodsell County, West Virginia, to Pennsylvania County in Virginia. 
Since the start of construction in 2018, there was a lot of controversy surrounding federal land use, nature conservation, and possible hazards related to this project, which are not necessarily here on Brush Mountain, but on the surrounding region, and those include um, landslides and car sinkholes. Brush Mountain neighbors Blacksburg and plays an important role in understanding Appalachian orogenesis, including faulting, differential weathering, and geomorphology. This geologic feature is also a great local source of coal and its trademark millstones of renowned craft and resilience. The construction of the Mountain Valley Pipeline has also revived Brush Mountain's prevalence in the region's energy demands. Best of all, it will continue to be explored by and open to the public for the foreseeable future due to the development of trails in the Southwest and designation of wilderness zones in the Northeast.